So good to be back. 2023 season kicks off March 17. We'll talk about that as the show goes on. We've got a lot to get through tonight, but I just wanted to welcome you all here to the waterfront on the pier in Port Melbourne. At the same time, welcome to Collingwood Night. How good is that? <laughs> Great to be back. I wanted to welcome you to uh, the live and interactive footy panel show, which is That's Good to Footy. This is where the fans meet the players and the players meet the fans. It's for the passionate supporters. This is the show which allows you to see the players be themselves. Are you ready? Let's go. What do you think? Okay. Collingwood, here we go. February the 15th. Please welcome to the show. He's our first panellist. He was born on the 25th of January in 1996. He's played a total of 126 games. He's kicked 67 goals. He made his AFL debut going back in 2015 when he plays for the Collingwood Football Club. He wears the number 30 on his back. Could you please welcome to the stage, Darcy Moore! <laughs> man. He is fantastic. He's so nonchalant. He came in. He was like, Damo, I'm here. Let's get this show going. Um, nice to see you, mate. How's everything going? Uh, I won't go into too many personal things, but in relation to the injury and the obviously subsequent um, infection, uh, are things progressing along nicely for you? Really good. First of all, thanks for having me and thank <laughs> you for that welcome. Yes. Yeah. It's been... Uh, it's been a while with off-season and then my illness since I've been in front of a room of crazy Collingwood fans, so it's great to be back. Forgot about how um, loud the noise is, so thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, you feels, wait till March 17. Feels like, I, feels like in many ways I'm coming home, you know, yeah, after oh, a few beautiful. months off. So. Oh, I like it. Appreciate That's it. That's nice. All right, like an um, old man into a warm bath. That's very beautiful. <laughs> That's I like it. it. Uh, good to have you here, mate. Let's not, without too much further ado, let's get our, our other panellist out here. Uh, please welcome to the show. He's our second panellist. He was born on the 29th of June in 1990. He was born uh, on the 29th of June, as I said. He's played a total of 219 games. He's kicked 91 goals. He made his AFL debut back in 2011. When he plays for the Collingwood Football Club, he wears the number 38 on his back. Could you please welcome to the show, Jeremy Howe. <laughs> said the same thing, mate. What a wonderful rendition of the song, but what a wonderful uh, reception that you've just received. How does it feel coming back out? You know, it's only February the 15th. Nah, absolutely. Nah, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, obviously <laughs> it's been a while since we've done one of these, but um, yeah, fans are everything to us, so it's yeah. a good experience for, for everyone involved. So Nice, nice looking crowd too, isn't it? Very, very good yeah, looking. Yeah. Our supporters are always the best okay. looking. Yeah. Uh, while we're at it, happy birthday, Colleen. Well done. Congratulations. Happy birthday, Lanelle. <laughs> Linnell, wherever you are, happy birthday to you as well. Congratulations. Uh, we've got the formalities out of the way. Let's get on with the show. We're going to do it in our opening <laughs> segment. We want to talk a little bit of uh, football with the boys. I'm going to uh, bring up some topics. The boys are going to answer them quite candidly. We're going to go through that sort of process with you. Um, I wanted to talk about with you boys, last game of the 2022 season, the Pies were 36 points down in the third quarter up against the Swans um, and the parochial Sydney crowd. You came back to only lose by a kick. I bring that up because that was your last game that you played. The belief in the playing group off the back of this and the season that saw you come uh, win 16 from 22 games gives the group tremendous encouragement and excitement. You must be looking forward to 2023. Yeah, I was just getting over it, actually, so thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> Appreciate it. Sorry, um, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I mean, that was... It was sort of perfect, wasn't it, that our season, the season that was, ended that way. Yeah. Um, it sort of put a giant full stop on our incredible season and crazy ride. 
Um, yeah, even even hearing that, 36 points down in the in the third quarter. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, you know, really doubtful that we could win from there, particularly the way Sydney was playing. But um, this team just doesn't give up, no. and I think that's something that you can't really artificially produce in a team that has that sort of belief and. For sure. We can feel it out there on the field. And then I think by the end of the season, the fans over the fence can feel it. <laughs> yeah. and, and it just becomes a snowball effect and then there's no stopping us. So yeah. unfortunately, we fell a little bit short, but yeah. hopefully we can just bottle that and keep bringing it this season. Tremendous season, though. Absolutely. 16 from 22, come from 17th the year before. Tell us what it was like for you, Jez, 2022, if you could sum it up. Oh, yeah, I guess similar to Darcy, it was probably... Oh, yeah, my experience is the most unique season I've ever played. Yeah. Um, you know, 12 seasons in, and I think the way that we won, the way that we either held a lead or we chased a team down, um, with any luck, 23, we might have a few more comfortable wins instead. Yeah. But we certainly take them, and the way that I probably look into it, I think we had a lot of guys come through, a lot of kids that came through and got some games experience as well. And I think we naturally, the way that the season unfolded, the belief and the confidence that we got in a new program under the new coaching crew um, can only lead us in good stead going forward. And I feel like 2023 um, will be another great step for us and um, with any luck, we can go a couple of steps further. Fantastic, man. Um, so the club goes into the pre-season feeling upbeat, but Darcy, you had your inju injury concerns and subsequent um, setback with the infections. Tell us now about the injury and how are you progressing? How, uh, I know you are back on the track and doing some running... Yeah, it's, it's, it's been really good. Yeah, I spent some time in hospital, unfortunately, in, in December to treat um, my infection. But fortunately, since pretty much in the new year, I've been up and about again and um, doing a bit of rehab pretty much every day. And it's gone as smoothly as it possibly Great. could have. So the Excellent. last month, I've built up training, you know, really solidly, really slowly. And now, um, you know, full training the last week or so and yeah. then um, going to play in the the match practice that we've got over the next few weeks against wow. Hawthorne and Carlton and Jesus. stuff like that. So it's it's a bit of a uh, sp sped up pre-season, um, obviously missing the, the pre-Christmas block, but it's um, I'm feeling great now and that's the main thing. So. Isn't it wonderful, though, that you go through that process and everything is just falling into place the way that you want it to? You must feel really satisfied by that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, you put a lot of trust in the medical team and, and all that around the treatment and diagnosis mm. and then um, around rehabilitating, not just to be healthy again, but to get back to playing AFL footy, which are two very different things. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, put a lot of trust in them to get that plan right, and so far it, uh, it's done me well. That's so. brilliant, mate. I love it. Uh, in 2022, one of the club's best attributes was the ability to run over the top of sides in the last quarters. So can I ask you, was there, uh, or has there been, um, a lot of focus on endurance and aerobic, aerobic drills over the pre-season and the camps? Yeah, I think we've we got a, as the new coaching staff came in, we also got a new head of high performance. So yeah. Jared Wade took control of that, that space. Uh, I would say, yeah, our conditioning was a lot different to probably what we were exposed to in the past. Um, probably a lot more game-like intensity with the, the things that we're doing, change of direction. Yeah. I suppose every club does it a little bit differently, but yeah, for us, our numbers even backed up the way that we are playing in games. So we'll, we'll number one by pretty comfortably in last quarters, the way that yeah. we ran out games. I certainly feel like the way that our games unfolded with the momentum, was like when you're feeling like that, you generally find a little bit more and you keep yeah. going and going. Yeah. Um, if you're up comfortably, you might park the bus a little bit if you can, but unfortunately, um, we couldn't do that um, too often. So, yeah, credit to the high-performance team. Uh, and even this year, I feel like our fitness base levels have probably gone to the next level, which is, yeah. which is good because wow. we're going to need it. Jesus, that's, that's huge. Um, you picked up some exciting new recruits, um, additions to the club in Daniel McStay, Billy Frampton and Bobby Hill. A key forward, um, a crumbing forward and a defender. Let's quickly talk about the roles up forward. Dan McStay is going to be a good addition uh, to the forward line structure. He's the type of player that will do one of three things. Mark the ball, um, in a, obviously in a one-on-one um, -on -one contest, and he's obviously extremely good overhead. Two, he'll drag away uh, opposition players, clearing the space for other leading forwards. Or three, he's going to, in a marking contest, as in a pack mark, he's going to be able to bring the ball to ground, which is going to be highly advantageous for players like Ginevan and Elliott. Um, that's going to be a, a huge acquisition. I'll talk very quickly and move on from him. We will discuss all of those. Uh, Bobby Hill, the opportunity 
to pounce. He's going to be somebody else that's going to be one of those crumbing forwards. Um, he, excitement machine, what he's going to be able to do, knowing that you've got in your forward line structure, it also frees up players like Hoskin Elliott, McCreary, giving you the forward line structure and formidable options. Um, I'll say these just again. When you talk about you've got um, Brody Majacek, you've got Ash Johnson, you've got McCreary, you've got Hoskin Elliott, you've got Jamie Elliott, you've got um, Jack Inovan, and now you've got Dan McStay, that's a pretty potent forward line. You must be happy with the way that looks on paper. How's it progressing? Yeah, we are pretty stoked about that. Um, that was a really comprehensive rundown. Yeah, sorry, really mate. Know. Sorry, I had to get it all out. I don't really know how to top that. Um, no, you're right. It's nice. Um, for us as key backs, I suppose, to have another key forward to play with at training in Dan McStay. It's always, it's always refreshing when you get a new talent come in and um, he tests us in different ways, which is always good and, and helps us prepare for the season. Um, I mean, you spoke about having options and that's the key. I mean, the best forward lines in the league aren't built around one person who kicks all the goals. You know, it's, it's got to be a shared load and not every, it's not everyone's week every week. So... You know, you need two guys to bob up when the others are quiet and then vice versa the next week. So if we can spread that load over the season with those... I mean, you listed eight or nine guys, all mm. of whom are, you know, good enough to play AFL and, yeah. and kick goals for us. So it's going to be tight for spots there, yeah. which is a great thing for the team. Absolutely. And if we can have those guys sort of sharing the load, coming into form at different times, it's probably something that we've lacked. We lacked probably yeah. last year, yeah. but um, to their credit... And they all put great pressure on as well. So yeah. even if... You know, it's a wet day or, you know, the ball's not sticking. We can put great pressure on the opposition and score that way. So it really is pretty mouth-watering. And we always joke <laughs> as, uh, as a back line that we always just um, kick the forwards' ass at training. So now we've finally got a bit, had a bit of a challenge the last few months. So we've enjoyed that. It's been good. That's good. I love it. You should be bloody excited. I think it's fantastic. Um, I also, speaking of formidable, have a listen to this. Um, how's this... You talk about your current midfield group, Pendlebury, Degoe, Adams, Dacos, Sidebottom, Chris Lipinski, and then you throw in Tom Mitchell. That is pretty bloody exciting. So I thought I'd nearly put too much mayonnaise on the forward line. <laughs> I, 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 I take it all back now because you have a look at that for a midfield group. Um, freaking believable. Just before you go on with it, I just wanted to say I personally think with the addition of Tom Mitchell into the mix, the difference he will bring will be something he hasn't had the ability to do at other clubs in his career to date especially. He hasn't had the outside runners that the Pies have got. He'll go in and under, he'll win the ball, he'll bring the ball out, you'll get first use of the ball and this will go a long way to making Collingwood a force to be reckoned with in 2023. Uh, I had him on at the end of last year uh, and he said to me, he's come to the pies to win a flag and he's bloody pumped. Yeah. So, so, so I'll just go back a step again because I'm sorry, I am, I'm, I'm bloody excited too, eh? You know? um, but my point being is you look at that midfield group, what an unbelievable elite talent and then to throw Tom Mitchell into the mix. Tell us what you're seeing around the club with that. Yeah, I think... Um, I think Personally, yeah, getting him in is like I think he's going to give like the likes of a Tay Adams a lot of assistance around the ball. You know, Tay's a great extractor of the ball. Um, I think he's like he's obviously had his own body issues of late, but he feels like he's up and going and got himself right. But Tommy will certainly help us in that aspect. And then you're right, you've got your transition runners in Crispy, Lipinski's like they're two, they're two best runners by a mile. You got your power players that go in there with Dugowie, um and then Jamie Elliott still gets to pinch in there as well. So. <laughs> Similar to what Dars touched on before, I feel like depth this year more than ever. I was like, we've got him in all three lines, and yeah, yeah it's exciting. And then you know, I feel like you know the the coach is going to have their work cut out for that round one side, which I'm sure everyone's kind of looking forward to seeing who gets in. But you'd hate to be on the selection committee, that's for sure. For sure. Um, just quickly touching on it, we've been through. Obviously, let's get down to the other end of the spine. We talk about um, you boys playing down in defence. Uh, I just want to allude to the fact Billy Frampton, great addition. What's he been like around at the club? What are, you, what are you learning off him at the moment or what's he bringing to the playing group? Yeah, well, he's obviously played at two other teams, both the Adelaide teams, Adelaide and Port Adelaide. He's been around for, you know, eight seasons in the AFL. So when you get those guys with great experience in different environments come in, they sort of add a lot of, um, lot of value in that, in that respect. They've seen different things, different systems, and they can contribute that way, which is awesome. Um, and as well, you know, he's, he's 26, 27 years old, so he's kind mature of head. mature yeah. and knows who he is. He's a pretty secure guy. So having guys like that around the club is awesome. And then, 
you know, I'm sure he'll be hoping this opportunity to be at Collingwood and to slot into our back six, back seven is obviously going to be a task given how well we performed last year. But um, he's done a great job this preseason and hopefully it can kickstart his career really and be an awesome opportunity for him. And he's, um, he's definitely impressed us in the first few months, that's for sure. He's done everything he can so far. It's a, another kettle of fish playing against an opposition, but sure. um, he's definitely been impressive That's so far. great. That's brilliant. Um, this is probably a little bit left of field, not that anything I haven't said already isn't, but um, Nick Dacos, I saw he, he um, was the fastest in the 2K time trials. Do you think like other players, and bear me out, just listen to this one. I speak of Dyson Heppel and Trent Koch and all captains in their own right. I think, is there a possibility that Nick, with his speed and his agility and his just ball sense, that there could be a possibility he could move into the midfield and Pendles could take on a role sweeping down back like Cochin and Hepp will do for their teams? In the latter stages of his career coming out of the centre, do you think there's a possibility something like that could happen? Well, I think, uh, to young Nick's credit, he, he put on about five kilos of lean muscle on the off-season. Wow clearly still has the ability to run extremely well. He's trained a fair, he's probably done a 50-50 split with the inside mid work and then also still down back. And then Pendle's kind of pick and chooses depending on how fit his body is, whether he wants to play inside mid. But um, so comfortably, if you see him at training, he's normally drifting just to kick behind the ball. <laughs> but yeah, the, the great thing for us is Nick's unbelievable regardless of where he plays. He certainly put his hand up to play inside mid. And, you know, he'll probably get a lot more attention this time around than he did last year. Obviously, people were going to him late last year. Um, and, yeah, getting tagged probably as a, a midfielder is probably the option more than halfback. Yeah, wow. Interesting. All right, that's our pre-season stuff, talking about the camp and so forth. I wanted to know, when you first found out that you were going to be playing AFL senior side, Collingwood Football Club, who was the first person you told? Can you remember, babe? Oh, mine was pretty straightforward for me because obviously, this, are you talking about my first Collingwood game? Yep. My first Collingwood game, I rang my dad because he's mad Collingwood. Then I rang my nan who's mad Collingwood as well. So, Because <laughs> I was obviously a Collingwood fan growing up. So they, they were straight on the phone. Um, so yeah, pretty easy wow. for me. I cannot remember the conversation about me getting picked for the life of me. I'm trying to really? remember. I can't okay. remember it. But um, I definitely would have probably rang my dad straight away. <laughs> yeah. and, I know, and I remember ringing him and he already knew why I was ringing him. He was <laughs> really? probably waiting by the phone every Thursday at about <laughs> 3 o'clock. Um, the but I rang him and he's like, oh, you're in, are you? And I was like, <laughs> OK, cool. How cool didn't is let that? Me, didn't let me uh, tell him myself. <laughs> but, stole all uh, my yeah. thunder. Oh, wow. Um, what was the emotion like for, for you both when you first put the Collingwood jumper on for the first time? You look down, black and white stripes. You're not a fan. You're not playing for anybody else. There it is. Dreamy music. Um, what was that emotion like for you? Yeah, it was um, really profound and powerful for me like I um yeah I remember holding the jumper in my hands for like 10 minutes before I even put it on in the locker room it was um yeah just a bit of advice that I got from somebody just to like really take in that moment of like first putting the jumper on and um yeah it was really quite overwhelming to be honest um and it's all such a blur your first game you don't really know what you're doing um well I didn't so um yeah it was it's just it's just indescribable feeling as a lifelong Collingwood supporter to, to put it on and then, you know, run out with some of your heroes that you wow. loved as a kid. It's it's really hard to describe and um, you know, your family there as well, yeah. my dad and mum and sisters, it's it's something else. Yeah. That's brilliant, Darcy. Thanks for sharing that. Jez, what was it like from you? Yeah, it was similar obviously, even having played at another club, but lifelong Collingwood fan. Um, I think as soon as you put it on, you have a moment of reflection about all the family moments that you had. Like Anzac Day was always a massive day back home in Tassie for me. Yeah. Used to sit down, dress full kit, um, watch it with my dad, full kit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just, oh, it was just a hell of a day. Like, and it's like they're, they're the moments where you almost like have a, yeah, a bit of a reflection. Think, look down, look at the colours that you're actually wearing, what it meant to get there, how proud your family are, and then once you run out, it's kind of. Yeah, it all kind of goes blank there for a yeah. second, but yeah, it's a great experience, one that uh, you treasure for the rest of your life, that's for sure. Brilliant. Well said, I love it. Great answers. Thanks, boys, thank you. Probably, um, I know the answer, like your dad 
knew that you were going to be playing before you got the chance to tell him, but who's been your biggest influence in your footy journey so far? Oh, yeah, I'd probably have to say my father. Yeah. But like, only because... I played the game because he loved the game. Um, he never pressured me to go all in. It was always, like I dabbled in a lot of sports, but so did he. And I used to run water for his footy team, like when I was about seven, like it's just always been around. Never, yeah, like I said, never pressured me, but always encouraged me to do things that I love. Um, the, fun of, the fun side of footy has always been really close to me. Probably if I start losing sight of that, it's probably the day that I'll, I'll retire. And, yeah, I think he's always encouraged me to enjoy what I do, and um, yeah, he's probably had the biggest influence. If um, yeah, to date, anyway. Love it, Jeremy. Thank you. Yeah, I'd say the same. Yeah, my, yeah. my dad yeah. obviously. Um, he was sort of the one who I always made come out. You know, at six thirty in the morning in the street and um, kick the footy with me pretty much every day. So um, they're the things you really remember. He helped me really cultivate a love for the game. Um, yeah. As, as you get older, it's harder to listen. It was harder to listen to him because, okay. yeah, most people's dads they can just ignore them and just run off and do whatever they want anyway. But I had the serious issue of my dad actually knew what he was talking about, <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of had to listen. Um, and then he was right; what he would say worked, and then I'd be like, "Fuck." <laughs> anyway, Damn um, you dead. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> well, we've come full circle now. I can uh, talk to him on the phone and. He lives on the other side of the world. That's yeah. probably why it's easier. Yeah. But no, nah, he's always full of advice and just more of a sort of mentor and yeah. someone who's obviously invested in the club as a past player. So he just loves, he just really loves seeing me and, and the guys that he's got to know yeah. over my journey just have a great time. So, you yeah, know, he was, um, take last year, for example, like he was just wrapped to see everyone, you know, beaming like the sun yeah. and just looking like they were having a great time. Yeah. He was, that was, um, meant a lot to him. That's so. brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, don't be embarrassed by these um, questions. Um, and I tell you, just give your answers. On a scale of one to ten, rate these as to where you think your playing abilities lie. Um, please be honest, okay? Um, strength, one to ten. Four. <laughs> I'll say eight. Oh, beautiful. Endurance. 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 Two. Two. <laughs> nah, probably seven. Yes, good. Um, determination. Ooh. Eight. Yeah, eight. eight. Oh, good. I like that. Defensive pressure. <laughs> Can't put pressure on if you got the ball. So, uh. Depends if I feel like it. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. We'll go with that. What about kicking style or technique? Ooh. Unconventional style, <laughs> but extremely effective. So I'd, yeah. say, I'd say nine. Oh, good. Nice. 9.5. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. Take that. Excellent. You're coming to your own here. Marking ability? Three. No. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going 10 on that one. 11. Uh, Dust? 11. Yeah, perfect. All right. <laughs> Too good. Excellent. Tackling pressure? Don't get them that often, yeah. but when we do, we stick them. Yeah. So, seven. We joke about this. We're both good for about one tackle a month. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jesus, a good tackle. It's a quite good tackle. <laughs> you should one. see that tackle. So, maybe... A Oh, six. Oh, yeah, six. all right. Um, never say die attitude. Oh. Yeah. Ten. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> Ability to read the play. Yeah, we're ten. We're a ten. We're ten. 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 Yeah. ten. We're a twenty. Yeah, yeah I agree. A uh, couple of last ones here. Ability to connect with others. Oh, that's a nice one. Mm. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll answer Darcy's. He's, he'd be a ten. <laughs> ten. He Beautiful. Be, so. That's nice. Yeah. Jez would be in 9.5. Excellent. <laughs> that was fudge, by the way. Wow. All right. Um, and this, I know you go out, you play football, you play in whatever conditions, but where do you think you're better? Um, rain, sun, like preferred playing conditions. Do you have, have one that is your ideal playing day? Oh. Nighttime, daytime? No, not, not really for no. us. Probably at the style that we play now is doesn't really matter about the weather. I feel yeah. like our old style heavily depended on good weather. Yeah. But now, like if it pisses down with rain or it's sunny, it doesn't really matter. So bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. I did get really 
annoyed last year at how many times it rained when we played. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, it was like a period in the middle of the season. It was like eight, seven or eight games in a row where you go out for the warm-up, feeling good, hyping yourself up, and it's just bucketing down. <laughs> and I'm a real city boy, so I just... I don't really warm up in those. I just get out there and turn around and sit in the locker room waiting for the game to start. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it nice and dry. Yeah, good. All right. <laughs> um, quick one here for all you boys. Who's been your hardest opponent to match up on, either current or past? Yeah, mine's actually, not many people would think it, mine's Sam Reid. I find him so difficult to play on against Sydney. Um, maybe it's just got me worked out. He's the one that probably has it over me at the moment. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's good. Um, one that I used to say, it's probably still true, is um, probably a bit surprising, is Jack Gunston. Okay. I always found him really difficult because he wasn't particularly fast or strong or agile or anything, but he was just really smart. Okay. Um, and just knew how to knew how to lead, and his timing was really good, and he'd catch you off guard a lot. Right. So he's quite smart. That's he was always difficult. Yeah. Um, the hardest players for me, and you'll probably agree with this, is like the ones that are really connected to their midfielders. Okay. It's just so hard to stop. Yep. Someone's fast or strong or fit, you can do things to negate that. But yep. if the midfield knows exactly, where, if he knows exactly where the midfielder is going to put it. It's just really hard. So guys like Josh Kennedy um, with his midfielders are excellent. Tom Hawkins, okay. those sorts of guys yeah, yeah. playing together for so long that yeah. they're just, it's really hard to yeah. disrupt them. I understand. Um, Darcy, more often than not, you tend to play deep. Opposition is always trying to take you up the field. Do you play this way because it gives you the ability to read the play better or allowing you to dictate p um, positional structure? And is that a fair observation? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's a bit of a mixture. I mean, obviously, I have a role at the back of our defence to kind of set everyone up in front of me. Yep. So it's quite helpful being back there because you can see everything. Yep. Um, you have no one behind you, so you can sort of set the defence up pretty strongly from yep. back there. Yep. Um, and as things sort of unfolded last year with a bit of a smaller back line, I found myself there probably a bit more often just yep. as the taller player to come yep. either side of the ground. Um, so... Yeah, but Jez cracks the shits because it's, you don't have to do as much running back there. <laughs> so he's blowing a gasket running up and down the field and I'm just standing at the back <laughs> sipping a pina colada and <laughs> just telling everyone what to do. And then the ball comes in and I'm just... <laughs> Hey, you, go do that. Uh, the reason I bring it up is because neither of you started down back, but you, you obviously... It's like hand in glove. And, and the way that you guys have defensive pressure, it's elite. It is really wonderful to watch. I know, and I've said this before, um, it's relevant. When you know that Darcy Ball or Jeremy Howe are going for the ball, you've got a bloody good chance of winning it. And that's what you love to watch football for because you want to be able to rely, as a fan, on the players that you support. Um, so I bring that one up as a bit of a throwaway. A couple of last questions. I'll start with a comment first. Uh, through the coaches... Um, uh, sorry, uh, I'll start it with this comment. The coach seems to be very gifted... He seems to be a very gifted communicator. What's he like behind closed doors as being able to convey messages um, either one-on-one -on -one or to the playing group? And have, how have you both found his style and technique? Yeah, it's, it's very appealing. I think the way that he's come in, he kind of came in and gave us some really consistent messaging all the way through. I feel like for a playing group, if you're giving something, delivering something new, like he always kept it relatively fresh but consistent. We had pretty much three focuses from the day that he walked in yep. to round well, the last game last year, the prelim wow. last year. It hasn't changed and we've still got three same focuses. But I think he just has the ability to, he knows how to motivate the group. He understands yep. people. I feel like his people management skills are really good. Mm -hmm. He uses his other coaches really effectively, which keeps it fresh within meetings or out in the track. And I think the guys respond really well to that. He's... He's definitely a very positive coach yep. and I feel like the guys around him are in the similar boat and, yeah, the guys are flourishing underneath him. I kind of was like, I was like, I said to him at the end of the season, I'm not sure how you're going to repeat what just happened, like the ride <laughs> that we've just been on. I was like, the emotions that we went on, the way that we feel, I was like, I don't know how you're going to do it. He's like, don't worry about it. He goes, this is what I do. And to his credit, we came back day one pre-season. It's like we never left. So wow. he's really good. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, I would just say like, one thing I noticed reflecting on the year was like he came in, 
And you see like a lot of new coaches come in and like try and like lay down the law, like this is how it's going to be. Um, and he certainly had a vision, but what he didn't do was like, what he did was all the guys that we have in our team that are really experienced, so guys like Jez and Scott and Steele and um, even guys like Crispy and guys like Jamie Elliott, guys who have played so much footy and you know, know how to play good AFL footy. Yeah. He really respected those guys and asked their opinion a lot and involved them in decision making and, and didn't sort of come in and tell them what to do wow. in, in a way, as like yeah. in like a dictatorial way. So that was a massive thing because he sort of made everyone feel like they were part of it, especially the more experienced guys and got everyone you know, reading from the same hymn book in many ways, which was really cool, so. It brings like two things to, to the fore, accountability and cohesion, mm. you know? So you know what your role is, you're accountable for it, but it brings the playing group together um, because of the cohesion, cohesive bond that he's bringing. Mm. That's brilliant, mm. oh, wow, very exciting. Uh, Jez, I just wanted to say, mate, um, congratulations on being uh, elevated into the leadership group, along with Braden and Taylor. Congratulations on Thanks, that. Mate. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, hello. Congratulations um, to both of you on your new roles, but to Darcy Moore becoming the 48th captain of the Collingwood Football Club. Wow. Where's the skipper's hat? <laughs> Or is there a crown here or something? <laughs> I should have brought one. I didn't want to rain over that at all. I didn't want to touch that. <laughs> just let that one go. But congratulations. I just wanted to say, you must be immensely proud, and I'm sure that your father is too, just in, in maybe a one-word answer, yes. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just brilliant. Congratulations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 30 days until round one. Friday night, Pies v Cats, MCG. How pumped are you guys feeling about that? Pretty pumped. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty massive, isn't it? Isn't Taking it? up Geelong in the first one. Um, fuck, it's going to be hard though. They're so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so hopefully they've just had a summer of just sipping lattes yeah. down at Ocean Grove, and Sit we can catch them napping. It's Sit probably a good chance. Yeah. So. Yeah, hopefully. It's like they've been sitting around <laughs> sipping on vanilla slices. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Um, I saw you boys out at Urban Surf yesterday. How'd that go? Yeah, I, um, it happened. Um, yeah, my mates were sending me newspaper clippings all day about my surfing skills just getting ripped by everyone. Well, we didn't know there were going to be journalists there, so we rock up. Everyone's like, yeah, I'll give surfing a go. I'll have a crack. I haven't done it in 10 years. And then we've got Channel 7, Channel 9, Channel 10, oh, yeah. all the newspapers there taking photos of us all. And there was like... One wave at the start that was like the biggest wave. So obviously all the boys wanted that one. So we had about eight guys on the first wave and they're all falling into each other, like <laughs> knocking each other over. Dominoes. <laughs> it was bloody funny. But no, it was good fun. But um, we were very light on for anyone who could actually <laughs> surf. So yeah, Nathan Murphy was the only one who, who was actually good. Yes. Everyone else was, yeah. um, was very shaky, but we had a good laugh. <laughs> I know, and Brody Mychek, of course, got a surfboard to the head and needed stitches. <laughs> so, of course, it was him. It was, uh, it was perfect that it was Brody. I can say this because Jez is an equal Tasmanian to me, but that's a Tasmanian <laughs> thing, so uh, I get that. Um, but uh, that's amazing that, that all of that took place. Uh, obviously, Jordan DeGoey always looks good just carrying a surfboard with his wetsuit down around his waist. I'm sure that's all he did all day. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, could you please put your hands together for Jeremy Howe and Darcy Moore. Thank you very much. It. I'd like to introduce a segment. It's called Simply the Best. Now, the way that this works, as I've uh, just introduced it, we've got Nicholas and Jackie. They're both going to be representing each other. Um, Nicholas, you've got a buzzer down there on the desk. Could you pick that up, put it in your hand, and put it and test it next to the microphone? <laughs> Beautiful. You're a good looking rooster. That sounds about right. Jackie, could you pick up your buzzer and test yours into the microphone? <laughs> Excellent. All right. Um, just a horse, but anyway. All right, so what's going to happen, if you guys think you know the answer to the question, you buzz in, all right? What's going to happen is, Jez is going to keep score for you, Nicholas, and for you, Jackie, you've got Darcy Moore, he's going to keep score for you. All right, are you both ready to go? Not really. Yeah. No. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not. Okay. Even you, Jackie. There you go. Darcy believes in you. That must give you enough confidence. Let's just give you the prize now. No, here we go. All right, here come your questions. Get your buzzer right next to the microphone. And your first one is... Oh, sorry, you boys know that you're going to be keeping score here. Yeah, yeah, good. How many premierships has your club won? Nicholas? 15. 15. Very good, correct. That is 15. Uh, that's, so he's got one. Thank you. Um, how, many, how many times has your team played in the losing grand final? Oh. Rooster? Nicholas? 28. Ooh, I can't give it away. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Jackie? Too many. <laughs> that's, that's actually not bad. It's not what I've got written down here, but um, would you like to have a guess at a number? 29. No, you've already had a go and you've oh, got it wrong. <laughs> nice try though, Nicholas. Uh, I got 22. Uh, no, no. Mm. It was 27. You were very close. All right, okay. Remember, keep those buzzers close to the microphone and use the bottom of it, not the top of it. All right, then I can hear it. Um, who, wears, who wears the number seven at your club? Nicholas? Josh Dacos. That's correct. There we go. All right, Nicholas is cleaning up at the moment. Come on, Jackie. Um, who is your team's captain? <laughs> Jackie. Darcy Moore. Yes! All right. Not only did she get it right, she's off the mark, and that's fantastic. All right. Um, how many members does your club get by the end of last season? That's 2022. Closest to within 1,000. Jackie. 85. No. Mm. Nicholas, you'll never go. 86. No. Mm. You had 100,615 at the end of the 2022 season. Wow. Yeah, pretty impressive. Well done. Put yourselves on the back. All right, here comes uh, question number six for you. Um, nobody. That's all right. You just talk amongst yourselves and I'll keep playing. That's all right. Um, <laughs> where did your team finish on the ladder at the end of the home and away season last year? Jackie. Fourth. Correct. Fourth it is. How many games did your team win last year? Sixteen. Shh. <laughs> Sixteen. Jackie, well done. Good guess. Well done. All right. So what have we got? Three versus two. All right, here we go. How many points? Uh, oh, no. What year did you win? Uh, what year did your team last win a grand final? And who did they play? Jackie. Uh, 2010 St Kilda. Correct. One point. For how many points? How many points did you win that grand final by? Buzz in. Nicholas. 56. Well done. 56 it is. We'll be looking at three versus four. Who was the Collingwood player that won the Norma Smith medal in that grand final? Buzz in. <laughs> Nicholas? That's one. No. Mm. Jackie, free hit. Uh, Pendles? Yeah, Scott Pendlebury, well done. <laughs> what are we looking at? Five versus three. All right, here we go. This is for two points. Who was your club's leading goal kicker in 2022 and how many goals did they kick? No? No takers? I'd say checkers, but I don't know by how many. Uh, hang on. What, what? Oh, sorry. Yeah? Sorry, Jackie, you say what you were going to say. Uh, it's checkers, but don't know by how many. No. Mm. Nicholas? <laughs> Forward plays with Collingwood. Jeremy Elliott? No. Brody mm. Meyercheck. Brody Meyercheck, 41 goals. Okay? All right? No points. Yeah, I realised, but I was looking for the whole... The, it's for two points, you see. So you've got to come out with a whole lot. She Can said, I, I don't point? know how many. All right. Thanks, Colleen. I know it's your birthday, but just... <laughs> all right. Well done. All right, this one's for three points. This is for player, year and votes. Who was the last Collingwood player to win a Brownlow medal? What year and how many votes did they poll? Oh, Buzz in. Jackie. Thanks, one, but I don't know what year. <laughs> Well, you've got, you've got one point. I'll give you one point. It was Dane Swan. Nicholas, can you give us year? Can you give us votes? Uh, 2011. 2011's correct. Well done. Yeah. And votes? 
27. No, I think at the number of each jumper. 34, so you get one point each. One point each. All right, here's, here's your last two questions, all right? The score is four versus six. So, Nicholas, you can make it a draw, or, Jackie, you can clean up. Here we go. I'll give you three... Uh, think about the question, all right? I'll give you three player names. Give me their combined total jumper numbers. OK? I'll give you, after you buzz in, three seconds to work it all out. Run an abacus through your brain. Here come your three players. Josh Dacos, Nick Dacos, and still side bottom. 27? Uh, no. Mm. No. No. Combined player numbers. Yeah, you've got yeah. to combine those three jumper yeah. numbers. Nicholas, did you want to have a go? What was the last jumper number? Oh, uh, still side bottom. Josh Dacos, Nick Dacos, still side bottom. How'd you go? No good? Mm. 54. It's 64. 64. 64. Uh, bad luck. Um, here we go. One last question. Combine total jumper numbers again. Jack Crisp. Jeremy Howe, Darcy Moore. Jackie? 93. Yes. Well done. Guess what? Jackie, you're our winner. You've won with seven. Congratulations. That wasn't so hard. Well done, guys. Love it. Hey, Jackie, guess what you've won? Set of uh, earbuds from Yamaha valued at 190 bucks. Ooh. Just for that. Because, Sam, she is what? Yeah. Wonderful. Come and get them, Jackie. Uh, just go down around the front. That'll be fine. Nicholas, around the front. Well done, guys. There you go. Congratulations. See, that was worth it. Well done. Congratulations, Nicholas. I'll go to, uh, get a, uh, a little football for you and I'll bring that to you at the end of the show. Don't go home without saying it. I said, Oh, how sweet. Yeah, he loves them too. That's beautiful. Uh, that was simply the best. It was proudly brought to you by Yamaha and the Big Picture people. They're the experts in home, se home theatre technology. The Big Picture people are located in Hoppers Crossing, Clyde North, South Morang, Cheltenham, Water Gardens and the Gold Coast. Um, I want to introduce this segment. It's called The Final Countdown. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> All right, what I want to do here, I'm just going to explain it. Um, you guys are pretty close on the field and you make split-second decisions, so mm -hmm. we want to see how quick you can think on your feet with The Final Countdown. Yeah. I'll give you a topic. You have, uh, you have to give me 10 things that come under that topic with 45 seconds on the clock. And I'll explain, I'll give you an example. So if I said, give me 10 colours, you've got 45 seconds to give me 10 colours. Red, blue, yellow, green, orange, yep. etc. cetera. All right? It's not going to be that, that easy. But I'm <laughs> going to give you a subject. Here's the wheel. So you've got on the wheel, name 10 from these subjects. Sports you can play, forms of exercise, Olympic events, brands of car, green vegetables, AFL stadiums, or types of pizza. Okay, so Sandy, who'd like to go first out of you boys? How do we win? We get the whoever ten. gets the most. Right. No, just whoever gets the most. I'm so whatever se whatever subject comes up, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're working. I'll out. go first. So just, oh, Darcy's first too. All right. So Sandy's going to spin the wheel. Whatever <laughs> subject comes up, we're going to see how many you can get out of that. Love this. Sandy, please spin it. Spin it. I can't see the wheel, so you guys are going to have to yell it out. I'm pretty sure they will. Sports. That's easy. Sports. All right. So all you've got to do is give me 10 sports in 45 seconds. Sam's got a clock down there. He's going to get it running. And all you've got to do is... Are we going? Are we ready? Are we starting? Uh, we, we, we'll be ready as soon as... He's, he's, he's ready to go. Sam, right. you ready? 45 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. All right. Football, soccer, hockey, weightlifting, swimming, yachting, rowing... Motor racing, netball, and basketball. Mm. Works exactly like that. 
That's how you get 10 out of Who 10. Who says yachting? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Nice. All right, nice that was cool. Booster. Yeah, okay. That's how it works, Jez. Let's see what subject you're going to spin up. Go for it, Sam. Nice confidence booster for Darcy. AFL stadiums, AFL stadiums, mate. Is, is there ten? I've actually got uh, I've actually got ten written down, okay. but if you can come up with any more, you Sorry. feel free to. Uh, you've got forty-five seconds on the clock. Let's see how you go. Your time starts now. Say so, MCG, Adelaide Oval, Optus, uh, SCG. What else? Shh. Uh, say Blundstone Arena. Yes. yes. Uh, Marnica, Marnica. Yes. Uh, uh, Geelong, whatever yes. it's called. GMHBA. Yes. Um, uh, what's the Giant Stadium? Yes. Marvel. Marvel. Is that 10? That'll do. Yeah, that's yeah, 10. There you go. <laughs> I think it was 10. I think it was 10. Wow. Hey, these guys are good. They know everything that's going on. Well done, boys. Well done. I was actually going to have two contestants up for that, but you guys got 10 out of 10, so nobody wins anything. You, you oh. guys are just too good. Um, well done. Uh, let's do another little segment. I want to have a little bit of fun with you boys here. I'll introduce it. It's called Let's Stick Together. All right, the way this one's going to work, boys, you play together, you're very close, you know everything about each other on the field. Um, I'll give you a topic, and we just want to see if you both give the same answer at the same time. All right, that's what we're going to do. There's going to be seven questions here. If you get seven right, you're twins. If you get five right, you're mates. If you get three right, you're strangers. And if you get one right, you barely know each other. Right? So on the count of three, I'll ask the question... We'll just have a practice around. We'll go, um, what's the best footy show going around? That's good for footy. Yay! <laughs> all right. Uh, you didn't get that, but that's all right. I should have, say I should have sent you the memo, the memo on that one. Yeah, AFL 360, you said. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's good. All right, so same answer, same time. Count it in from yep. the count of three. What's your favourite ground to play on around Australia? One, two, three. MCG. MCG. All right, there you go. I think he was reading his lips there. That was good. Very nice. Okay, one each. Um, the team you like to beat the most? One, two, three. Melbourne. Melbourne. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Who's the tightest player at the Collingwood Football Club? One, two, three. Pendlebury? Yeah. Oh, no. The tightest bloke I knew is not there anymore. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah? yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. We'll leave that one. All right. Um, who's the player, and this is on the count of three, who's the player that gets his shirt off the most at the club? One, two, three. Josh Dacos. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. All right. Okay. How are we going so far? You're just Two. you're getting up Two to strangers, yeah. boys. Yeah. All right. The bloke who thinks he's the funniest at the club. One, two, three. Trey, Trey. Rusco. Yeah. Trey Rusco. Yeah. I'll say yeah. Trey. Yeah. All right. You got yeah. that. All right. All right. You've just gone beyond strangers. That's good. Yeah. Well done. Um, the player you want with the ball to win the game. One, two, three. Darcy Jeremy Moore. Howe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> nice, boys, nice. Well done. That's right. pretty cute. <laughs> That's oh. the cue back in the rack. All right. Um, this is a yes or no answer on this one. This is your last one. All right. You're gonna, if you go get this, you're going to go to mates, which wow. is a pretty good status. Right, yeah. All right. Tomato sauce, should it be kept in the fridge or the cupboard? I thought it was a yes or no answer. <laughs> uh, so... 
One, two, three. Cupboards. I don't even like tomato sauce. <laughs> All right, they're strangers, OK? All right. But they'll be right. I'll get used to it. I'll be back at the club at training again shortly. Well done, boys. That was a little bit of fun. Put your hands together for them. Thank you. I just wanted to acknowledge a couple of things. Uh, firstly, we're really wrapped to be down here doing the show at the waterfront and uh, the pier... <coughs> excuse me, the waterfront on the pier. Um, a fabulous venue. We hope you've had a good time here tonight. We've really enjoyed being here. I need to let you know we've got a few shows coming up. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, our next show will be with Essendon's Anthony McDonald, Chip and Woody and Darcy Parrish on... February the 22nd at the Mulgrave Country Club. Then on March the 1st, we're heading to the Italian Sports Club in Werribee for a Richmond show with Daniel Rioli and Morris Rioli Jr. On March the 8th, we're heading to the Craigieburn Sporting Club with Melbourne's Tom McDonald and Tom Sparrow. What's the team you love to beat? Melbourne. Melbourne. All right. On March the 15th, we've got players from the Western Bulldogs Football Club appearing on the panel. That most likely will be here. We're just working the, the details out on that one. Then on March the 22nd, we'll have Jack Steele and Jack Bytel joining us from the St Kilda Football Club, live from the Mulgrave Country Club. And then on March the 29th... Ooh, we've got a few shows here. Uh, we'll have Adam Chera and Tom De Koning joining us from the Kelton Football Club, live, at the, live from the Italian Sports Club in Werribee. Yeah, well... You are Collingwood, you've got to hate them. Uh, remember, when purchasing your tickets, only purchase them through the That's Good For Footy website, www.thatsgoodforfooty.com.au forward slash events, or click on the links in the Facebook um, post whenever you see them go up on the page. All I'd like to do now is just um, say to you, thanks very much, everyone. It's great to see you all. It's great to be back talking football again. I know we're still 30 days out from round one. Who gives us stuff? It's, you know, we like it. Um, but I wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's great to see you all again. Great to be back uh, actually talking football. Could you now please put your hands together for Jeremy Howe and your 48th captain, Darcy Moore. Thanks to both of you. If you'd like to pick up the microphones, I'll let you boys have a final say. Is there anything you might like to sign off with to the fans here tonight? Yeah, just want to say... Thank you very much. As we said at the start, it's awesome to be in a room full of Collingwood faithful again. Hopefully it's the first of many this year. And um, thank you again so much for your support. You guys are what make it special for us. So we're going to need you again this season. We need you to pack out the G. We need you to come along and be as loud as ever because if we learned anything last year, it's that you guys are a force to be reckoned with. So let's bring it again. How good is that? You might want to just say ditto. I don't, I don't have to add anything to that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Here, here. Sign sealed, delivered. I hear you. Um, thanks very much, everybody. It's been wonderful seeing you. Uh, my name's Damien. This has been the That's Good Footy Panel Show. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Cheers. Bye.